Good afternoon, everybody. Here we have the front line, as we say. So I'm going to start off with a very sober note. In 2007, we had a turning point for the human race. For the first time in our 175,000 years on this planet, we became Homo urbanus. More people now live in urban areas than rural areas. One of the great turning points in history. But these urban areas are, have a Janus face. On the one hand, they bring more diverse people together. They extend the central nervous system. They allow us to create more empathic embrace across wider domains. They create a more cosmopolitan sensibility, a more global sensibility. But these same urban civilizations consume vast amounts of the Earth's energy and create more entropy. The paradox of history is the conundrum between increasing empathic consciousness in energy-consuming urban environments and the increasing entropy bill they create. It's no mistake that the most cosmopolitan, the most empathic, the most globally tolerant civilizations are the most urban. The uh, agricultural societies uh, that uh, are not urbanized tend to be the most xenophobic, but they have the least ecological footprint. <laughs> yeah, that's the paradox in history. How do we break the shackle between an increasing urban empathic cosmopolitanism and the entropic bill that goes with it? That's what we're going to talk about. Somber note. Last month, the Financial Times ran a small article. It did not register on the radar screen. Perhaps the most important piece of information we've ever had, and we all missed it. Our scientists report that within 30 years from now, we are likely to see open waters in the Arctic across the summer. We haven't seen that reality in millions and millions and millions of years on this little planet. And Homo sapiens, again, have been here only 175,000 years. We're the youngest species on the block. As my wife says, we're not grasping the enormity of this moment. You are. You're the front line. But your fellow citizens are asleep. That's why it's so frustrating for you every day when you get to the office. You see the reality of this and the time we have left. Two weeks ago, the... United Nations FAO met in Rome on an emergency meeting. They now report we have a billion people, one billion people going to bed hungry. That's one out of seven human beings. And our anthropologists tell us never before in history has one out of seven human beings gone to bed without the to feed themselves. And if our climate change models are correct, as climate change continues to deteriorate the conditions of the planet, more floods, more droughts, more wildfires, our yields are going to go down, and we could see a collapse of agriculture by 2030 because of climate change. If agriculture collapses, urban civilization goes down. As context, let me introduce an anecdote because I think it's instructive of the challenges we all face in urban civilization. When Chancellor Merkel became Chancellor of Germany the first time around, she asked me to come to Berlin in the first few weeks to help her government address the question, how do we grow the German economy in the 21st century? Interesting question. When I got to Berlin, the first question I asked the Chancellor is, Madam Chancellor, how do we grow the German economy or the EU economy or the global economy in the last stages of a great energy era? This is what we're not talking about, a G20, G7, or G2. We are in the sunset of one of the great energy revolutions in all of history. Coal, oil, natural gas, tar sand, heavy oil, shale, uranium. Is there anyone here in this room Anyone that thinks we're in the sunrise of these energies? <laughs> of course not. Sunsets take a while. We're going to be in this very dangerous twilight period for the next several decades. But what is becoming increasingly clear in the business community and in our great cities is that the problems attendant to these conventional energies, 
are now overwhelming the benefits we get from them. Do we have any engineers here today? Engineers. You know, in the final analysis, we never escape the second law of thermodynamics. We are paying the entropy bill. This is not a metaphor. We took the carbon deposits of the Jurassic Age, we dug them up, we created one of the great short-lived civilizations in history. Now that spent CO2, that is entropy, it's clogging the biosphere, and not, we're not getting enough of the solar radiation back out of the Earth. That's as simple and profound as that. That's the problem. 